Join the Ashen Lords, he said. I will make you powerful, he said. Well, this is a part of sh Hey, you beautiful buccaneers, Falcor here. So there seems to be two parties at the moment. Those who say Flameheart in the game is senior, and those who say Flameheart in the game is junior. Both of them bring up very good arguments, and it could be entirely possible that either party is correct. Or neither. Or both. We'll have to wait and see. But until then, let's delve into some more discoveries within the Heart of Fire. And there really is so much to go into that this is going to have to span over several videos. Oh, and it goes without saying, spoilers ahead. It's Flame Heart Senior. So on your travels within the new tall tale, you are greeted by a very salty Flameheart, who tries his best to stop your adventure by basically smack-talking you into submission. Unbeknown to him, we are seasoned pros at being smack-talked, like this guy who I boon-kegged at a fort and stole all his loot. Ever. So it doesn't bother us at all. But during this tall tale, it does appear to bother one person in the Sea of Thieves. And that person is Stitcher Jim. Flameheart lured him into this cave system with the promise of resurrecting an Ashen Lord, but little did he know, it was him that was to become the new Ashen Lord. After a brief hissy fit, he runs into this sealed door. Now this sealed door only has two symbols that we know of in the top right, the word two and the word flame. The rest is unknown, and they bear the same symbols to the entrance of the Heart of Fire. That is until a friend and well-known Sea of Thieves podcaster managed to squeeze the truth out of Mr. Mike Chapman on Twitter, and he revealed that the entrance to the Heart of Fire says, Pirates for all eternity. But that's what it says on the book which proves it's Junior. Shut up! And keep watching. First of all, what Junior writes in the book isn't necessarily his word. Keep in mind this book was written after he was cursed, and he spent a great deal of time with the captain. Therefore, it's more likely that this was a repeat of something the captain had told him, which means, if anything, this was the captain's dwelling, or a discovery of the captain, or a discovery of Flameheart Senior, not Junior. But this place has been here for a long, long time time, probably even before the existence of the Captain or Flameheart Senior. So this place could actually be merfolk or ancient in origin. The skeletal script, as it is called, is something that skeletons use, but it's never said to be their language. It is merely a code they use so us fleshy folk can't figure out their clues. So it could in fact predate the skeletal curse. Now I know a few of you might be thinking, why would the merfolk or the ancients have a word for pirates? Well, keep in mind with most forgotten languages, the translation is sometimes wrong. Pirates could very well mean friends or companions or family. It's all down to who was the first person to translate. But still, this is just a theory at this point. So we know the first words is Pirates for All Eternity, followed by blank to flame. So me and my Discord channel, link below, alongside Mr. Captain Logan of the Keelhauled Podcast, also link below, please go check him out, scoured the game for other clues that might tell us what this symbol means. Firstly, we found the symbol on Stitcher Jim's rage chest, next to the symbol for chest. Now we know that this chest held the souls of the Black Witch, and we know people possess the power to bind souls to objects. So our first thought was bound, bound chest. Pirates for all eternity, bound to flame. It kind of makes sense, but doesn't sound quite right. It was then Captain Logan found a screenshot of the very first tomes we had to hand in to Duke. These tomes were called Tome of Curses, and the tome bears the same symbol as Jim's rage chest, which means this strange symbol likely means Cursed. Cursed chest. So the symbols above this door actually reads, Pirates for all eternity, cursed to flame. This was a pretty big discovery, and also gives reason to why Stitcher Jim was granted access. He was cursed by flame, and entered a room where his transformation will take place. But this wasn't the only discovery to be made in this domain. The astral version of the Burning Blade is missing a cannon, which makes sense because Wanda found one of the stray cannons, which is what cursed her to make her follow Flameheart. But we also recently discovered that she found the figurehead. The figurehead on the astral ship is still present, but the cannon is not. So if this is an apparition of the Burning Blade, that means when it sank, the cannon was not present.
So in a world where people cannot really die, and access back to the land of the living is determined by the ferryman's judgement. It would make sense one of the most notorious pirates in the Sea of Thieves would want to be a pirate for eternity, without incurring the wrath of the ferryman and spending eternity as one of the lost souls on his ship of the damned, and would go to any lengths to make this happen. But as I said before, we'll leave that for another video. That's it for today folks, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video then please hit that like button, and if you really liked the video please hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that bell so you're always notified when I upload. And if you're looking for ways to support me please head over to my Patreon page where I offer tiers that give you perks for your support, link is in the pinned comments below. Until next time, take care of yourself and happy sailing, bye bye.